Hello everyone, in this video we're going to see whether the DSA sheet by Love Bubber is enough for placements. So I get a lot of questions from people asking me whether Love Bubber's DSA sheet is enough for placements, whether they should take it or not. So I get a lot of questions asking things like that. So let's get into all that. And if you're watching my channel for the first time, then my name is Ashish Kumar. I make videos on placement preparation, data structures and algorithm, computer programming and computer science in general. So if that's your content, then do subscribe to my channel and let's get started. So to those of you who don't know, Lovebubba has a DSA sheet of 450 questions in which he says that if you follow and if you practice all these questions, then your DSA preparation will be done. So he has 450 questions divided into topics like array, strings, all the DSA. So he has sections and in total he has 450 questions. So let's see whether these are enough for placements and what are the mistakes that people make and you can avoid so you get the best out of this sheet. So all in all, to put it simply, yes, this is enough for placements because they have 450 questions. Okay, so 450 is not a short amount. It is a large amount. It's a large collection of problems and it does cover almost every data structure and algorithm that is generally asked in the interview. But still, there is a few things which are missing from this sheet. I'll talk to you about that later. But first, let's get into a few mistakes that people make while coming into this sheet. The first mistake that I see a lot of people make while following this sheet is that they have no time boundation on the problem that they're solving. So suppose they're solving problems and they come across a difficult problem, then they give it two hours, three hours, and sometimes the whole day just to solve that problem. And that is not a good approach because one, in interview, you're given a time constraint, right? So you're given either 45 minutes, to like 60 minutes to solve one problem, right? This is like the maximum time you're given to solve the problem and you have to solve the problem in front of the interviewer in a coding interview, right? So if you're giving one problem like two hours, three hours or four hours or even the whole day, then that is not a good approach. So this is what you should do. You should have a time foundation. Okay, so you should have a time foundation. So whenever you're solving a problem from the sheet, set a timer, set a timer of, of 45 minutes, okay? So set a timer of 45 minutes and try to solve it within 45 minutes. If you're able to solve the problem within five minutes, 10 minutes, well and good, move on to the next problem. Otherwise, try to solve it till 60 minutes, okay? Keep trying to solve it till 60 minutes or at max an hour and a half. After that, leave the problem be for now, okay? Don't spend any more time, leave the problem be for now and get back to the problem after you move to the next section, before you move to the next section. So suppose you're in arrays, right? and there's a problem you're not able to solve. Okay, then this is what you do. Try to solve it for an hour, and if you're not able to solve it, leave it be. Move to the next problem. Now, before you move to the next section, that is matrix, again, go back to the problem that you weren't able to solve, and then try to solve it. And again, if you can't solve, then you can look at the solution and then move forward along with that. So this is one approach that you, that you should follow, that keep a timer ready. So basically, you should have a timer. For every problem that you solve, keep a timer. So this will help you in two ways. First, it will help you because like I said, in the interview, you will have a time constraint. And second, there's a lot of questions in this sheet, right? There's 450 questions. So if you give one question two or three hours, then it will be very difficult for you to complete each one of them. Okay. So that is one thing that I see a lot of people do that is not, ha not having any time or any time foundation, just solving problems for the sake of completing it. The second problem that I see a lot of people face while following this sheet is burnout. Okay, because it has 450 questions, which is which might sound overwhelming, right? So initially you'll have that boost, you'll have that hype, okay, okay, I'll solve all the problems. But if you try to solve problems, all these problems within a month, within two months, then you might face a burnout and you'll drop this sheet. Lovebubba says that you should give this sheet seven to eight hours a day, but I don't agree with that. Seven to eight hours a day problem solving can be very difficult and can be very frustrating, okay, especially if you're just starting out for DSA. So I believe that you should give it at max two to three hours. So if you're following this sheet, give it at max two to three hours so you avoid burnout and so that you stick to it, okay? Because if you follow this sheet halfway through and then if you drop it, then that is not going to be good for you, right? If you're following this sheet, make sure that you follow it to the T. So for that, avoid burnout, give it two to three hours a day, at max four hours a day, and in all of those hours, make sure to have a timer, okay? So you don't give all the day, all the two to three hours to just one problem. So first thing, set a timer for every problem. Second thing, don't give this sheet a lot of time. 
Avoid burnout. Give it at max two to three hours. Another mistake that I see a lot of people make is that they solve problems from the sheet just for the sake of finishing the sheet. So they think, okay, I have to finish this. And for that, they finish the problems and they solve the problems by any means. They look at the solution way too quickly. They ask other people for the solution without putting any efforts. And they just, you know, finish the problem just for the sake of putting yes, yes, yes here. And that is not a good thing, obviously. Because these problems, you have to remember, these are not the exact problems that are going to come in your interview. They might come in your interview, but chances are these problems are not going to come in your interview and the problems you face are going to be different than this. These problems are there just to develop your problem solving skills. Okay, so if you're not learning anything from these problems, then it's of no use to you. Okay, so to, to see whether you've learned from this sheet or not, there's one thing that you should do and that is to solve company-wise problems. Okay, so you can like follow the archive of big major companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft and all and try to solve the problems that have appeared. Okay, so company-wise after finishing the sheet or while in the middle of the sheet, randomly solve company-wise problems. See if you're able to solve it or not and that will be a good like test for you to see whether you've, you know, whether you're learning something actually. So after you finish string, after you finish binary search tree, try to find binary search tree problem in company's archives and try to solve them. The thing I'm getting at is, is just don't stay limited to this sheet. Try problems from outside the sheet as well. Okay, so try problems from outside the sheet. Okay, make sure that you're learning things from the problem. So these are the three major mistakes that I see a lot of people make. Now, I told you before in the video, that the sheet is pretty much enough, but there is a few things missing. So let's get into that. What is missing from this sheet? So when you go for interviews, right? So obviously you're asked DSA questions, you're, you're asked DSA problems, but you're also asked some problems that are not DSA oriented. So you might be asked a problem that has no relation to any data structure or any algorithm. So these are the problems that don't require any DSA. They require analytical thinking, they require intuition, they require pattern searching, observation, mathematics, and those kind of things. Okay, so you need to have a practice of those problems as well. And these problems come a lot in coding round. Okay, so you need to have practice of those problems. So for that, what you can do is you can uh, like go some go on some coding websites like Code Forces or Code Chef or uh, hacker rank and then solve problems from there as well so i suggest this to everyone who's preparing for placement and that is to solve problems from either code forces or code chef so in code forces you have div 2a div 2b div 2c like difficulty so try to solve till div 2c those problems don't require any dsa and these are the type of problems that i've seen in a lot of coding rounds likewise in code chef you can solve beginner problem easy problems or till medium problem and these don't require any DSA but these problems come a lot in coding round. So this is what I feel like is missing you know problems which are not related to DSA. So this is what you should do. So after you finish the sheet or while you're doing the sheet try to solve problems from code forces or code chef and try to give a couple of contests on either of those sites you know to see whether you're able to solve those kind of problems or not. Okay. So like I said, coming back to what I said before, the sheet is pretty much enough. There's a lot of problems, 450 questions pretty much covers everything. But DSA is not the only thing that comes. There are problems that don't require any DSA, like I said. And these are the three things that you should focus on. 